right-sided midfielder. We seem to have every other position in the squad sorted. We've even got backups for them positions. The only position we seem to be struggling at at the moment is that right-sided midfield role. We've been linked with a lot of players since the summer transfer window and before that. To name the main ones I'm, we're going to discuss, if, if anyone as well from the comments or you guys have any uh, other names, bring them up and we'll just talk about them. But I've gone with Jude Bellingham, Aurelian Schuamini and Gavi. I think they're the three that we've sort of been linked with. Uh, Schuamini at the moment has been tipped to join Real Madrid as of today. Um, I'm not sure how reliable the sources are and Matty and we know your love for Jude Bellingham but Damon I'll start with you who should come into Liverpool and take over this right side and midfield role for the next 10 years you know what I want I want actually two midfielders just because of the age of like Thiago and Henderson and Milner's going to be going soon anyway so yeah I'd, I'd take two midfielders this season however I'd I like you a many. I really like you a many. But Bellingham is my number one choice. But it's just the wage, isn't it? The wage and the the transfer fee for Bellingham is ridiculous. And will Dortmund sell both their superstars in one transfer window? I can't see it. The other, the other name I'd throw out there is Declan Rice. If if he was available and if the price was right, again another big transfer fee. I think he. It was reported that he was number one target for Jurgen Klopp. It used to be Bellingham, but then it changed to De- Declan Rice like a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Um, but I think Declan Rice would be an, un- an unbelievable number eight. I do. I know he plays at six now and Fabinho's there, but Declan Rice at number eight would be unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, Louis, you know, there's there's a lot of names to choose from. You know, the main one being Bellingham, which seems like we've been linked with him for absolutely ever. You know, who's your ideal eight? You know, we there's, we can talk about Harvey Elliott, but, you know, he's 18. Curtis Jones isn't really living up to what we were hoping. I, Matty, I won't slander him, but we, <laughs> we, we all have to admit, you know, he was, he's been given a chance multiple times this season. And he's on the right side, like, though, Charlie, he should be playing on the left side. When he plays on which the left is, side, he uh, always puts an eight out of tens, always on the left right. side. Well, we, we'll stick on the right-hand side, so I won't criticise him too much. But, you know, <laughs> Naby Keita as well, but but again, mainly left. So, you know, it's... it's, it's a, there's a lot of options, isn't there, Louis, who we could choose from. Some people are mentioning Ruben Neves, Basuma, uh, Dominic Schlubbelorz. I don't know how you say his name, but that fella. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you know, who are you going with? Um, I, I mean, I'd prefer to be like someone who could do at least two of the midfield roles in one i think that's important having um diverse players like our front three most of them can play in any of those front three positions carvalho coming in can play in the midfield and across 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 most of the front three as well so i wouldn't i wouldn't go for bellingham because of the fee involved i just don't think we would ever entertain that I also don't think that it would be worth him coming in and potentially playing on the left side as well. I don't think that suits him at all and we'd be re-restricting him. So he would have to be primarily used on the right. And as I said, I prefer it if, if people could play a multitude of positions. So I think out of the three you, nis- you listed initially, I'd have to go for Gavi. I think he's got maybe the most... <sighs> Bar Bellingham, maybe the most raw talent uh, that could be developed. And I think he's got enough skill sets that he could fill in in multiple positions as well. Looking at the prices for each of these, Matty, you know, Gavi could be free, which is a massive selling point. Um, we reportedly offer him a con, off, we've already offered him a contract of six million a year. Um, Chuameni is looking at around. 40 to 50 million, I think pushing 50 million pounds. And we know Bellingham's going to cost upwards of 80 million pounds. No, it's a lot. You're looking at Bellingham and it's it's double for what we can get for a lot of other players, isn't it? But do you think the quality, he's got more quality than the other players? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think 
I think Gavi and, and Bellingham's doable. If you're getting Gavi on a free, especially, um, but I don't think Bellingham's doable this season. I think Jude Bellingham, for me, is probably more of a long term Henderson replacement, and I think Henderson's probably got another season in him, playing most games. Um, I think he probably will maybe drop into the middle of the road a little bit next year, um, but Liverpool will wait. If, if they want Bellingham, they'll wait. They waited for Van Dijk. They, they wait for, they waited for Allison. They'll wait for players if they have to. I think Jude Bellingham is his family are Reds. He's a Liverpool fan. So that's what sways me more to him because I like players on that pitch who knows what it means for the club. You like your Harvey Elliott, your Trent, your Curtis Jones is because it's by having a fan on the pitch. And I think that's what Bellingham is. And he idolised Gerard. If he comes to Liverpool for the a lot the long term, he's probably going to play under Gerard. I just think Bellingham, feel like you've always said, and we and I've always said as well. I think Bellingham will play for Liverpool one day, and I think if you can get him for eighty million from Dortmund next year, that's your opportunity. Because if he goes to any other club as he gets older, gets better, you're going to be talking stupid money for him, like you are with Mbappe, your hundreds of millions and stuff like that for, for Bellingham. He's that good, so I would be waiting to get him. I, I really would. I'd I'd take not signing the midfielder this summer if it means getting Bellingham next year, a hundred percent. Um, but if Gavi's a free, I think you can do the two of them. Gavi excites me, he really does excite me, but does the Elsa Barca, I don't have a pedigree, but getting Gavi's Gavi's just as good. But I would wait for Bellingham myself. I think Shu Many's probably gonna go to Real Madrid. Um but Bellingham is just he just oozes class and is I think the pull of like we have got quite a big English core in the in the club at the minute as well. You've got Trent there, and again just if he's idolised Gerard, he's going to be looking to come to Liverpool and, and be in his head. How many times do you think on the playground he screamed Gerard when he pinged the ball? How many times do you think he still does no, it? Because I know everyone else does. So I just think, I think Bellingham is probably the worst kept secret in football. I think he will 100% play for Liverpool. Not this year, but next year, 100%. He's already got a chance for him as well. You know, probably one of the only players who doesn't <laughs> play for Liverpool has got a ready made champ for when they do join. But you know, looking at other players, Damon, you know, we've we've mentioned three of the main ones, and you obviously mentioned Declan Rice, but we have been linked with other ones, you know, a, f- a throwback, Florian Newhouse. Um I've just had someone else in me mind, Basuma, who I don't think we'll touch because of the whole essay uh, case at the moment. I don't know. I don't know. Google search for anyone yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Um but you know, does does Ruben Neves as well is another good one who somebody mentioned. So there's there's a lot of decent talent out there, you know, apart from them three and Declan Rice, who who would you look at, you know, for Liverpool? Like uh Matt said, I'd look at Pedri. I think Pedri's an absolute baller, but I could see him being built built around at Barcelona now with Ped, uh, with um Xavi. I do. I think he'd be an absolute baller under Xavi. I mean, the perfect guy to to be managed under, to be honest. Um yeah, I can't really see past those three. I do like Declan Rice. I have a, I'm a big fan of Declan Rice, but he's a Chelsea fan in this. So I'd go with Bellingham, like Matty said. I can't see anyone else. No House is okay, but he's not. It's not the level that we need now. It, no House would have been a good one for uh, ten years ago when we was fighting for fourth. But no, I think Bellingham, Bellingham is the perfect perfect solution. Louis, you know, say it was a midfield is what we need, ideally, too. You know, James Milner looks to be on the way out, hopefully. As much as I love James Milner, I think his time with Liverpool is coming to an end. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about Ox's role in the squad. He seems to be on the, on the brink of leaving as well. There's a lot of talk about Curtis Jones also going out on a, a loan next season. We could see Harvey Elliott as well go out on a loan. You know what? What in you know departures for the club in midfield? Who do you think is going to be going? You know, in that midfield role to to bring in another midfielder, basically. Yeah, because I think coming into this season, it wasn't always. We seem to have um, quantity over quality in the midfield. Obviously, Thiago, Cater, Fabinho, Henderson are all fantastic options, but we've got a lot of midfielders, and I think. Interestingly, before January, you know, if we weren't sure how to get them into the midfield and if we needed to give them a run out, we could just rest one of the front three and shove Jones, Elliot, Oxlade-Chamberlain into one of those front three roles. But 
with Jota playing so well, with Diaz coming in um, and doing so well, there's just no room up there. If you're resting Salah, you're bringing in Diaz or Jota. If you're resting Mane, you're bringing in Firmino or Diaz. So now there really are only three spots that those midfielders can fight for. So there, there should be, really, there should be some quite big changes, as you said. I think... Milner, it, by all intents and purposes, it just looks like he's going to get a new deal. I, I don't know why we would do that. I, I used to think that was okay, but with where we need to go, who we need to bring in, I, I don't think we should give him a new contract. I don't know if that's controversial or not. Oxley chamberlain for me, I don't like to have agendas against players, but I really just think his time's finished. Um, you know, The last time he played, he came off and was in a bit of a strop about it. You know he's been given he has been given chances and he just hasn't shown any consistency. So those those two definitely uh, I think should be out of the door and then Henderson moving into a bit more of a background role. So um, and then yeah I, I expect Elliot to stick around next season. Curtis Jones I'm not too sure because yeah it was quite favoursome to put him on the left wing, but as I said there's just no room anymore. So unless Klopp thinks that next season he will have developed and will be a viable option to use um, consistently, then maybe a, a loan deal might be good for him as well. If you really think about it, there's going to be a lot of space to fill there, isn't there, really? There's, Thiago is not getting any younger. Henderson's going to get, like Louis said, he's going to go into a back a back, a back step role. Um, Milner's going, Ox is going. Curtis Jones just didn't that player that we wanted him to be. There's only really Harvey Elliott and, and um, Fabinho left. Kater's injury for him. So, I think we're ruling out Curtis Jones a bit too much. I didn't realise it was everyone had sort of crossed let's him out. I'll get on to that. I'll get on to really that. Player. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I think I think Chris was the one who alluded to it on the podcast and on a stream. You know, I, I think it was after his Watford performance where, you know, he, he dropped a stinker, Matty. We all have to. Is it the same Chris who, who's being called for Ox to get a buddy like time contract? Though, I know? think, nah, I think, <laughs> I think Chris as well has sort of admitted. We haven't seen Chris in a while, but he's admitted that Ox needs to go. Um, we, I'll speak on that for him. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's. You know, we, look, we've got Naby Keita, we've got Harvey Elliott, we've got Thiago, we've got Fabinho. Jordan Henderson is still going to be around. Uh, Fabio Carvalho is going to come in and come play in, you know, an eight. So there's, there's seven, six midfielders for next season alone without even taking into account a potential Milner extension and Curtis Jones too. Because I, I honestly believe, Matty, that he's going to go out on loan next season. I just don't see how he how he gets into this squad with the likes of Ox being sold because Ox has to go next season as well, doesn't he? Yeah, I, I, I want Ox gone. I mean, he was the injury ruined the Ox, and it's sad. I loved Alex Oxley Chamber before the injury. He was a fantastic player, but just I think James Milner starting ahead of him last night speaks about Ox's place in, in this squad now. Um, a few points, James Milner. I'd give him a new contract because I always say it. You're going to ask Stephen Gerrard what influence Gary Mack had on him when he was coming through. And he'll, there's a reason Gary Mack's part of his coaching set up at Aston Villa and was at Rangers. I think Milner, in terms of what he offers for the dressing room, for the young players coming through, I think we will give him a new deal on that basis. And he'll probably maybe be doing some coaching badges while doing it. If, if he doesn't sign with us, he'll probably go to Leeds and do a year there to finish his career. Um, but James Milner, for me, is someone you should be holding on to, definitely to keep with the progressions of coaching because he is the epitome of what Premier League football should be, how he handles himself, how he is. We've got all the time in the world with James Milner. Not good enough to play week in, week out, but I think he's good to keep around. For 140 grand a week, though, Matt. No, 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 no. He needs a new deal on about probably 50, 60. Um, is is like he going to sign that, though? You know, that's the uh, thing, isn't it? I suppose, yeah. I mean, if he's only getting offered the same money, say, at Liverpool and the same money at Leeds then I'd say maybe he goes to Leeds to finish his career because he's a Yorkshire lad, he's Leeds through and through. But I think I would keep him. But not on the, obviously, he's not going to get another 140 grand deal. His contract's up. But if we reduce his wage and he signs, a James Milner is massive in that dressing room. Whether fans want to accept it or not, you own that Stephen Gerrard, the influence Gary Mack had on him. 